Hello everyone, my name is Michael. Today we're going to take a look at some ransomware. Now today's sample is a ransomware that goes by the name Kimsilware, and if you've heard of this one, it is actually a ransomware written in PHP. So it actually attacks web servers. So we'll go ahead and take a look at this in Notepad++ because PHP is just basically plain text. And we'll see here it's been obfuscated by the free online PHP obfuscator at this website. So there's a couple ways we could uh, probably easily de-obfuscate this ourselves by just uh, taking out the eval and uh, you know running it ourselves. Or we can uh, just Google a de-obfuscator. So we could look up FOPO de-obfuscator, and I've got this first result here. So this is actually a script by Antelox, and uh, it does a pretty good job of de-obfuscating our script here. So let's go ahead and paste that here. Go ahead and run it. And we'll see, this looks like some readable code. So let's go ahead and grab this all. Go to the end, copy that. And I'm going to use uh, some PHP Beautifier. Let's go ahead and just find, uh, I just Google the first one that comes up. And let's go ahead and format that. And yep, this looks a lot nicer. Let's go ahead and download that. And we'll plop that into notepad here and okay so we'll see here here's the class kimsilware and we'll see it has a constructor just built some variables we have a key gen here we have an evil encrypt function that looks like the encryption encrypt data it probably just uh, grabs the file changes looks like it changes the name with the dot kimsilware extension and further down here we actually have a backdoor. Uh, looks like we can feed it a command and have the system run it. So you could run like host name or basically any shell command that the user that PHP is running as has permissions to. So hopefully it's pretty well sandboxed, but you can still get some very interesting data out of this. Um, then we actually have a form that lets us upload more files. So this is completely a backdoor in addition to ransomware. So let's go ahead and take a look at our encryption here. So I'm assuming for each file, yeah, we go through, glob just goes through the entire directory. We encrypt the file and then recurse if it's a directory. So we go to encrypt file, evil encrypt. So we generate a key and that's just the file and then we rewrite we write over the file so let's take a look at our key gen here so it looks like we're building off of server document root which is going to be just like a slash or whatever the folder that the website's running from we have the server name it's usually like localhost or it could be the website name or the virtual host name so we take that then we add uh, some static strings in between them. We put the current date, some more state uh, static strings, the date. Then we have this crazy craziness here. So we'll start from the very inside. And we'll see this is a static string. And we're appending key 3, which is what we generated up here with all the dates and garbage. So we take that. We take a SHA-1 hash of that, then we MD5 hash that, then we base64 encode that, then we MD5 hash that, then we GZ compress it, MD5 it again, do a URL encode for no reason, MD5 it again, then we take a substring, and we take from 0 to 25. So we take only the 20, first 25 characters of this crazy conglomerate here, and then we return it. So since these are static strings and the, usually the date doesn't change unless this for some reason ran at like 11.59 p.m. Um, hopefully every file would be encrypted by the same key. So then what we do to actually encrypt, we pass this key to evil encrypt. We have our, our key and what we're encrypting. So we're using encrypt encrypt. We're going to Encrypt it with Rigendale 256 here. We're going to use ECB mode. And we're going to generate a random IV for what 
Ridgendale 256 in ECB mode requires. Now, once we encrypt that, that'll give us raw bytes that we base 64 in code, and then we R trim. Apparently, we R trim the zeros off, which that's a very interesting move here because encrypt actually in PHP. Um, it actually by default uses zero byte padding. So what they're essentially doing here when they're encrypting, they're killing off the padding, which can be a loss of data. Um, also, if you just if it just so happens that the encryption ends in some zero bytes at the end of the ciphertext, they'll be removed here. So this is definitely some amateur work here. So let's go ahead and since it attacks a web server, I have a web server instance on my host. 2.2 slash kimsilware slash kimsilware. So let's take a look. We can see uh, we had that UPL command that shows us the uh, upload file command here. So, but let's go ahead and run the ransomware. I have a modified version of this on my host. And we'll see we encrypted some files. There's some undefined. There's an undefined variable. This is actually why they have error reporting turned off because this C, since it's in double quotes, it's interpreted as a variable, and the variable C does not exist. So that's another kind of stupid mistake here. So let's go ahead and I'm going to go back to my host where you can't see and I'm going to transfer those files that we just encrypted here to where my sandbox can grab it. All right, let's go ahead and refresh this and here's those files that we uh, that we just encrypted here. So I also have on this server here I have a script that will show us that key that was generated. So we can step by step look at this code basically. So I have a table here. So we have the, uh, the document root, which is where I'm running the server from. And then the IP, which is just because that's the IP I'm calling it from. So here's that mess that we have with the static strings and the date and all that. Then I just have this password is basically what basically what this is that we're going to be generating and putting in here. So we have this string, then we have the step where we SHA1 it, then we MD5 it, then we base64, and here's the MD5, then here's the GC compressed, then the MD5, and you notice the URL encode doesn't do anything here. And then we hash that, and then we take the first 25 characters of that hash, which is rather stupid of them, which you'll see later on here. Um, so we have 25 bytes as our key, and this is our key. So here's where we would, um, let's see if we can decrypt this file. So let's go ahead, I'm gonna use my crypto tester. I'm gonna drag this file in here. Now a couple of uh, KVATs we're gonna run into here. If we go ahead and paste this key, we'll see it's 25 characters. Let's go ahead and select AES. And we don't know what the IV is, but I'll get to that in a little bit here. Let's go ahead and try to decrypt that. And we'll see there's an error that specified key is not a valid size for this algorithm. So that would be very curious. How are they encrypting this data? Because if I take a look at this in a hex editor, it's not, um, you know, it's, it's not gone. It, it is encrypted. And actually, there is an additional step here. If we take a look at the script here, it's actually base encoding, so I do need to uh, undo that. So let's go ahead and take this file into Notepad++. Plus plus. It's going to take a little bit to load because it's a big file. Come on. All right, there we go. So Notepad++ plus plus does have a function that I can, if it lets me, select all and let's go ahead and base 64 decode and we'll notice a pattern here um, this is actually because it's in ecb mode we'll see it repeated 
uh, bytes over and over since it's encoding the exact same block over and over. So let's go ahead and save this as decoded. All right, let's go ahead and take that into here. And then, okay, there we go. So we see some repeating bytes. We still try to decrypt that. We have a wrong key size. Now, something interesting about PHP's encrypt function. Let's go to php.net slash encrypt. And we'll take a look at the documentation here. We actually want to use encrypt encrypt. And we'll see it's been deprecated. So this, this ransomware runs on an older version of PHP. I had to adapt it to work with my server with, with 7.1. Um, so we'll see, key to be encrypted. Here's that note, like I mentioned, data will be padded with a zero byte. So that's good to know, uh, since that uh, wouldn't be apparent if you didn't actually read the documentation here. Now, we'll see here that on PHP 5.6, they changed it so that if you give it an invalid key size, like we do here, 25 bytes, you will it will throw a warning and return false. And this will actually, if, uh, if this was ran on a newer version of PHP, it would return false and thus it would write the file with nothing. And actually, I ran into this while testing it. <laughs> uh, so... We'll see here's the critical sentence. Previously, keys and IVs were padded with zero bytes to the next valid size. So that means that this key, actually in the background, PHP extended it to 32 bytes with zero bytes. Now, since I'm in text mode, I can't just add a bunch of zeros here. Those are interpreted as ASCII hex 20. So let's go ahead and take this key Let's, uh, let's open the hex editor and kind of translate it to hex real quick. So it's actually going to it's going to use this hex as the key and then it's going to pad it with zero bytes. 32. So all right, and then we need to flip this to ECB mode. And we're a little closer. Now we'll notice there's some repeating and it's not quite the zero bytes that this file's supposed to be, so we have something, something a little off. Now, the secret to this is, this is actually not using AES, and this is a uh, b bit of a pitfall with the encrypt's uh, confusion, confusing constants here. This is not AES 256, and that is because the Rigendale for, uh, algorithm can use a different block size than what AES standardized. AES standardized the 128-bit uh, block size. So we actually need to use Rigendale 256. And this is explained in the docs. Uh, one of the first comments here, someone saying, this is not AES. It's a different variant of the block cipher. So you need, if, the, if you were going to use AES 256, you have to use Rigendale 128 with a 32 byte key because this is the block size this is the key size they are separate so they also some other comments go into talking about the uh, the null byte padding and all that such so if we flip this over Rigendale 256 hit decrypt we get our zero bytes so also another note um, you may notice that I don't know what the IV is and they don't store it that is actually because uh, the block mode ECB does not use an IV so they are creating an IV completely for no reason <laughs> so that a uh, lot of different signs that this was written by an amateur lots of crypto mistakes um, luckily it is decryptable as long as the victim has the same server instance going and knows the date. Um, this ransomware was from a few years ago, so um, I'll uh, leave a link to the uh, encrypted uh, version of it, and you can reverse it yourself if you want to play with it. And that was a simple analysis of a PHP-based ransomware with a couple little KVATs to look out for. Um, 
so I hope I uh, hope you enjoyed and if you have any questions feel free to drop them in the comments and thank you for watching